stream. Okay, Councillor, we're now live. All right, thank you. Uh, welcome to a virtual petition hearing of the London Borough of Hillingdon. This virtual meeting is also being broadcast simultaneously on the Council's uh, YouTube channel, Hillingdon London. My name is Councillor John Riley. I'm the Cabinet Member for Public Safety and Transport, and I'm the Chairman of this meeting. A few words about uh, online housekeeping before we start. Some important uh, housekeeping uh, points for everyone present. Please ensure that any mobile phones around you are on silent. Please keep your microphone on mute when not speaking and then unmute when you speak. Only one person should speak at a time and I as chairman will call upon those to speak and try and keep an eye on the room uh, through my gallery view as to those who've indicated. But I'm sure Ryan will help me out with that if anyone's put their hand up. And in terms of technical meeting control, if any councillor leaves the virtual meeting partway through for a period of time or lost connection, I'll carry on with the meeting. Um, we will now have a uh, something of a roll call before we move on. Um, I'll ask those present to confirm their attendance. Uh, and uh, will any board councillors present indicate and also confirm if you have any uh, declarations of uh, interest. So if I start with the um, board councillors, if you just confirm that you're here, Councillor Hagar. Yes, I can confirm I'm here. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor Dennis. Uh, yes, I can confirm I'm here. OK, thank you. I don't think Councillor Edwards is with us, but he, I know he had hoped to be, but I think he may have had a, another uh, matter to deal with. Um, all right. Um, so officers. Um, OK, David. Good evening, uh, Chairman. Yes, David Knowles. I am present and correct. Thank you very much. Um, Steve, are you on mute or something? Or? Yes, present, Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And of course, Ryan from Democratic Services. Thank you. Yes, present, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, uh, all, all details of the uh, agenda will be dealt with uh, in, uh, in in public and um, also are available on uh, YouTube underneath the broadcast. So um, we'll go to the um, item on the agenda and the purpose of this um, petition this evening. The uh, lead petitioner is invited to uh, speak for up to uh, five minutes uh, and then uh, I, I can ask questions and indeed officers can ask questions and then we can ask we have any um, ward councillor comments uh, and ward councillors can speak for uh, three minutes uh, each. Um, I'm relatively relaxed about those rules, not the timings of the speaking, but the questions of the interaction later, because that's the purpose of of the petition and making sure that um, that everyone goes away understanding what we're aiming to do. So shall we start with um, uh, our petitioner uh, and uh, you get to speak for five minutes. OK, um, first I was going to speak at the negative impacts that we're currently um, going through living in this part of the B466. Um, the first part is mainly pedestrian safety and speeding. Uh, for the past 18 months or so, um, traffic speeds of what we feel have increased exponentially on this stretch of road, particularly on the S bend of High Road East Coat and East Coat Road. Also further up East Coat Road where the, bend, where the road is a lot straighter. Um, <clears throat> speeding cars have always been a bit of an issue here. Um, and we have additional safety concerns relating to the high volume of large, heavy and speeding HGVs of various types which are now using this route. Um, this has been causing a few issues um, with allowing people to cross the road safely at various points. Um, there's a few zebra crossings nearby by the Black Horse Pub, um, Highgrove Pool and also Lidgold Grove and Pe Pembroke Park area. Um, in addition, it's noted that the crossing over at Windmill Hill roundabout is also very dangerous. Um, I noticed in the mornings, you know, a lot of parents use that ch school children going to various schools nearby. Um, the zebra crossing also close to Lidgall Grove Pembroke Park is also very precarious due to the fact that drivers either side of the road are not able to react quickly enough um, if they are travelling at speed due to the S bend. 
and the pavements on this stretch of road um, are very narrow and the curbs are quite low on this particular side. Um, and vehicles have been seen mounting the pavement where they're not able to see pedestrians clearly due to the bend and that's very dangerous. Um, second fact, um, second point I wanted to make was the shaking of properties bordering the road along with lots of unbearable noise and concern about increased air pollution. So we've had a lot of HGVs, um, skip lorries, large trucks using this road. Um, it's been increased a lot in the past 18 months and they're constantly using this route. Now, we've never really seen that many use this route before. Um, and, the, and the heavy weight of the loads that they're carrying is, is really quite shocking. Um, it's causing a lot of distress to the local residents. Um, the noise factor, the pollution, just contents shaking in the house, which is really, really distressing for them. Um, the speed of these vehicles, although we're not sure if they are actually speeding, is the weight that they're carrying is causing a lot of vibrational issues within the properties. We're seeing cracks appearing where they've not been there before. Um, and just the noise, um, they're coming very early in the morning, nighttime, weekends. Uh, we did a, a, a small count of, um, you know, an average sort of on an average day and we sort of counted on average one per minute of a HGV coming past here. Um, we're trying to, we've, I have tried to sort of tackle some of the companies directly involved, but I haven't really received any sort of meaningful response from them apart from Ocado, but um, you know, we have problems with Ocado anyway because of the low bridges, so they can't access where they need to go. Um, so anyway, we feel that they these HGVs must be accessing this stretch of the road for various reasons. The first point we can think of is HS2. Um, and although it's not easy to prove that, that this is the case, um, we believe that the increase of HGVs of all these types is attributed to you know, the vehicles and contractors assigned to HS2 works nearby. Um, although um, the, ma the majority are all carrying kind of huge amounts of earth diggers, um, all kinds of very heavy equipment. And although HS2 have said to me that this particular stretch of the B466 isn't used as one of their designated routes, nevertheless, we're sure these contracted companies working on HS2 are using this route, as we have seen them doing so. We know that they're meant to display HS2 sign on the dashboard, um, but we believe many don't, possibly because they are contracted companies. Maybe they're re returning to their bases, um, but nevertheless, why are they routing towards this area specifically? And we would urge Hillington Council to maybe possibly speak to HS2 to investigate these problems further in order to place some control over the amount of, you know, HAV traffic, basically, inclusive of all those contracted companies who work under HS2 as well. Um, there's also lack of access for HGVs to, do, to, to get to some of their destinations due to the low bridges in South Rice. Sorry, that's 30 seconds left. I'm sorry okay. to um, and also during the past year, neighbouring councils have also introduced some 20 mile per hour zones on, on roads close to the A40, which we think is causing tailbacks of trucks and HGVs all squeezing off at Swakely's roundabout and coming down into this area. So, you know, we have, I have a few solutions um, which I can email you um, if it's helpful for you, David. Um, but really, we just request firstly a speed survey to be done as a matter of urgency and the road resurfaced really urgently here. That would make a big difference in a short space of time. Um, I'm not sure if you want to add anything else to that, Councillor Dennis, but um, I think you've seen it yourself in person. Um, but yes. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. If, if that's um, close to the um, allotted time. All right, um, the councillors get, I think, I think it's three minutes, um, up to three minutes to, to add. So we'll start with um, maybe Councillor Hagar and then Councillor Dennis. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Dennis is actually um, going to be talking for us, so uh, for myself as well. And I'd just like to say, I have, we've obviously seen the report and we have taken note of exactly what you said as well. And um, some of the, obviously some of the road servicing work is being done currently at the moment too. Um, down King's College. So um, I'll hand over to uh, my colleague, Councillor Nick Dennis. Thank you, Chair, though, for um, letting me speak. Thank you. Not at all. Councillor Dennis. 
Thank you, Becky. Um, I'll be quick because three minutes disappears as quick as a uh, big lorry going down the road, actually. Um, so, yes, no, I went down to meet Shelley on Friday and, and I actually went down to the road today because I need to get some petrol. And this one minute, uh, one big lorry per minute is completely accurate. Um, you know, we don't I don't necessarily want to portion brain, but it's definitely down to HS2 and related work towards that. What that means, I don't know. But essentially, the truth is massive lorries carrying earth and massive you know, heavy duty vehicles go along, the road shakes, it's a physical thing, the speed and the size, uh, the noise, uh, it's always been a busyish road, but the noise is just bigger than it's been. I know residents have talked to me about cracks appearing in, in, in their houses. Um, we know, because we campaigned long against HS2, because we knew this type of thing would happen, that we're looking at seven years of stuff, stuff like this. Now, it, you know, this is the old village, the old East Coast village. Uh, the road isn't massive. Um, it, the pavements in certain parts, especially around that bend you're talking about near the petrol station is very, very small. Kids mm -hmm. cross the road to, to go to school, their shops, you know, something needs to be done. So read the report, very good, full of detail. But what I'll be looking for is really what needs to be done. Um, and, and uh, you know, I won't repeat what Shelley says because it's all completely true. But in terms of solutions, um, possible solutions, uh, obviously around the roundabout, maybe if the roundabout in Windmill Hill is built up, so um, traffic do have to respect it, slow down and go around it, that might help. Um, you know, I'm generally against speed cameras in general, but actually on the on, on the S Bend um, during these seven years where these big vehicles are going down, is actually speed cameras necessary? I think it seriously needs to be looked at, and I'm not somebody who normally would say that. Um, you know, anything about sign and um, I, you know, again, um, reducing maybe to 20 miles an hour around certain key areas where there are crossings, you know, near um, Highgrove Pool and, and, and the school and, and all this sort of stuff. Again, you know, the one thing that I think we all as councillors um, think probably won't work would be traffic lights because ultimately that would create massive congestion on an important road and then you'd get the rat run down even Avenue and other areas which cause other problems so I, you know that isn't 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 so much um, where, where I'm thinking um, uh, beyond that it's obviously you know the as, as I read in the report there's a lot of expertise in there um, I mean, ultimately speaking to HS2 about their contractors and what they can do, I think would be good. But I think the actual ultimate truth is that we can't rely on that and we can't rely on them um, necessarily policing this because the amount of vehicles going through is just huge. And to yeah. be honest, their priority isn't, uh, you know, the residents of East Coast Road. I don't dismiss them for that. So I think I think in many ways we need to, to, to really think about what we can do in this area, because ultimately this is going to be, uh, you know, obviously there is the potential bigger issues of, of, of casualties and, and crashes, but there is also the long-term issues of people's houses and, and you know, getting structural damage and pollution and, and also sound and going to sleep and all these type of things. So, um, you know, I, you know, I back everything that Shelley says, and um, I really think we need to have some good solutions here. So that's that's my main contribution. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you very, time up very well. much. Um, thank you. Uh, right, this basically boils down to two aspects, and then different aspects in relation to each of the two. It, it it's the um, the road as a whole. And certainly um, the the bends, uh, as a, as the petitioner has um, suggested, and speed around there, and and speed on the road as a whole, and then separately, because part of the reason for this petition were, were, were the tragic circumstances from last year in relation to um, the incident at the roundabout. So what we've done is to concentrate on both those two aspects. So the roundabout itself, uh, and uh, coming up to the roundabout from all four directions and then the speed and you'll have seen from the officer's report and in fact we've taken it further uh, since then that um, and David will deal with this in more detail but I'll just outline it briefly that there are a whole raft of um, of speed mitigation and, um, and, and and physical aspects that we need taking the roundabout first of all um, we and then working our way, as it were, back up East Coat Road. Um, we, 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 we need to reconfigure and, and to recast the, the approach to the roundabout, certainly on both ends of or from both sides of East Coat Road uh, and the roundabout itself. At the moment, of course, it, it, it's this sort of fried egg shape. And um, we, we're, we're looking at various um, ways of highlighting 
the fact that the roundabout is there and making much more of a pronouncement of the actual roundabout itself rather than the the, the sort of white of the fried egg part because it's the it's it's the middle part that drivers of all vehicles are supposed to really observe well uh, and, and treat as a as a roundabout dealing with the um with 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 the with the idea with the safer crossing aspect um for pedestrians at the roundabout again there are a, a, a number of different options in terms of raising um the uh, the the essentially the whole area or raising the approaches in order to be able to have um pedestrian not zebra crossings obviously but uh, walkways and then various methods of um, alerting drivers to the fact that a roundabout is coming up and and one of the best ways are the and i never quite remember what the technical description are, of them are but the um the, the 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 signs which come on when drivers go too quickly um with either a, some sort of legend or a smiley face and a, a sad face or some sort of alert uh, and and we can and we're certainly um get uh, looking at um getting a number of those put in uh, uh, on either end of east coat road coming in towards the uh, the roundabout to act as alerts for drivers approaching the roundabout and so but david will deal with all of this in much more detail in a moment and then as far as the lorries are concerned um there, there, there is a bit of a history um, in terms of lorries and what we're able to do. Um, there is a, um, oh, can I just say about speed cameras? Um, we, we, uh, the council cannot put in speed cameras. It's not, it's not we're, we're not able to do that. That's not what we do. Uh, well, I mean, it would be lovely if we could, but we're not allowed to because speed cameras um, uh, 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 deal with enforcement and enforcement by uh, criminal prosecution uh, so that that, that that isn't within our purview and it, it's dealt with by a, a consortium of the police transport for london the court service and i think all london councils uh, which is a combined body of all the as it says as it says london councils and um a, a, and it's really down to that organization to deal with speed cameras which create enforcement issues and also of course um, carry penalty note uh, penalty points with them uh, so um, so that, that that's pretty much out of our hand however what we can do is to do as many of the um, enforcement issues or mitigate speed mitigation as we possibly can and um, there's quite a there's quite a bit as I say that David will cover that we that we can do um, uh, including these um, the, these um, flashing signs, um, the the lorry control scheme uh, is something that that for a long time this council has not been involved with because um, a, a number of years ago that there, there were all sorts of problems with it. It wasn't terribly effective for outer London boroughs, and besides which we were paying a sort of fee to be a member of it, and we weren't really getting terribly much out of it but things have changed a lot as far as that's concerned i suspect on the basis of the whole issue of noise and vibration pollution and the way in which lorries use residential areas and i think now is a a good time for us to and, and for me to recommend to officers that we look at rejoining that it's not something the london lorry scheme it, it, london lorry control scheme it's not something that, that is charged for anymore, but it is something that seems to be more effective now than it used to be. So I think we need to look into that because that may very well be something that will help with mitigating the use of lorries of this road. The problem, of course, is, and everybody recognises this, that East Coat Road is a, is a main road out of this area. And the increased use of lorries for deliveries, especially in the recent past, and and lorry movement generally and of course they'll, they'll always try and find um the quickest route uh, or the late or, or the least problematic route so where where one potential route for them becomes 
a 20 mile an hour or has speed mitigation, they'll just move to another place. Well, we need to get them off our patch in a sense, um, as much as we can. Uh, and um, again, the team, we're going to be looking at the extent to which the London Lorry Control Scheme can, can help with that and any other uh, issues. I agree with Councillor Dennis, if we, if we just sort of try and talk nicely to HS2, I don't think it's going to make an awful lot of difference because they are entirely focused on doing their thing and not really worried too much about um, the, the consequences of what they're doing. So, um, uh, uh, the uh, yeah, the, it's a VAS signage, that's right. Um, the resurfacing, that's, that, that's in fact already uh, being taken care of and um, that, that, will be, uh, uh, that will be done. So what I'll, I'll hand over to, uh, to David Knowles and to Steve Austin to, uh, to fill in the detail of these various proposals that we've got. But there are, as I say, a, a, a raft of proposals that I'm going to ask the officers to move forward with. But um, I'll hand over to David first. OK, thank you, Councillor. And that's a, you're a tough act to follow. So um, hello, Shelley. Well, we've, 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 Hi, I think Jake. we met about 10 years ago. So, you know, oh, yes. so you've been a long term campaigner for, for issues here. If I try and share a plan, see if I can make it work. Okay. Um, so I think, can you all see a plan in front of you? It might what take a moment to load. There we go. Yeah. This is this is a plan that you'll have seen in the um, in the officer report, but I've just sort of put it up on the screen just yeah. so that we have a, a shared understanding of the bit that you're primarily concerned about. And I think the area you're you're into, you've talked about is from roughly from Four Street um, at that at end going down past Lidgall Grove. You mentioned the crossing near Lidgall Grove yeah. down as far as the Windmill Hill roundabout, which again, Councillor Riley spoken of. So I think if we're agreed, that's the the general area that is of has been of concern and I on the bottom of the screen is, in fact is an extract from your very helpful written petition submission which gave us a lot of um, stuff to look into and to consider. Yeah. So Councillor Riley has already said that there is some resurfacing that's going to be taking place already. Um, it's, he's agreed it and signed it off. Um, I don't know um, at this juncture exactly when it's going to take place but certainly from the the Rysip High Street end going up in the other direction certainly to Windmill Hill, that is a very uh, section that somewhat needs um, some resurfacing. There may be some other bits that are in the section further up towards your part of the world where there may be some particular issues. And I'm, I've spoken to my highways maintenance colleagues and I will make sure that, that when they do the, the programme of works that are going through here, that they, they don't miss anything at that end too. What I would say is that if there are any particular sites and I'm not saying you've got to I put you on the spot now to tell me, but if there are any particular locations where you think it's particularly bad for whatever reason, your local knowledge would be really useful. So by all means, send, send that through to us. We'll do, yeah. Um, speed cameras well, or safety cameras, Councillor Ryan has already spoken about those. And unfortunately, much as we might like to, we're not able to put those up because of the, the fact that they are related to basic to police enforcement you, know, you can get a speeding ticket you can go on an awareness course you could get points on your license those are things that under current legislation the council can't do um but the vehicle activated signs that the you, you you're aware you've had one um some years ago up yes. your part of the world yeah we're looking at getting a, a, a new batch of those the latest technology um they're superior much more durable okay. and um, we're talking to Councillor riley about basically getting a, a batch of them I suppose what would be useful for us to know um, from yourself and perhaps with the input of your war councillors, is where you think the best locations would be. Now, you might say I'm just sort of pushing that back onto you and, I, and I'm quite happy to make suggestions. But, you know, you, the residents uh, and the councillors probably have a, a sense because you see it firsthand where the speeding is most acute. So if you can give us some suggestions. I yep. should, I've agreed in principle with Councillor Riley that we would have between the section that goes from um, Eastcote down to Ricelip, at least four. OK. So let's say you've got sort of two in each direction. If you can think of somewhere where you think they would be really beneficial, please let us know. Yep, I will do. Yeah. Um, in a similar token, I think in the, as the uh, without sort of preempting what the decisions that Councillor Riley will make this evening. Um, I think we've talked about having some surveys. I think they are doubly important because of what you've talked about in terms of the um, the lorry movements that are going through here. And 
in fact, from what you've said, um, I think if I just stop showing that screen for a moment so we can actually see faces. Very interesting you spoke about HS2. I meet with HS2 on a regular basis. Uh, the issue about lorries that should not be using certain roads, roads is a, a regular occurrence. We hear it from residents associations. We hear it from all sorts of people. Okay. I, I do take this to HS2. And as much as one can ever believe anything that they say, um, I believe that there is genu genuinely a, a concern that they are seen to be trying to behave with some responsibility. This is the parent company, the organisation. The, the problems that you face as a resident on the ground is the lorries from the contractors who play games. Um, that clearly is not acceptable. You made points about the HS2 signs in the windows and they take them out because they're playing all sorts of games. If you've seen a large numbers of, of earth moving equipment and, and contractors lorries and tipper lorries and that sort of thing, that sounds the very sort of vehicles that we're talking about. Um, as Councillor Riley will know, we've had lots of issues in the whole area that's that's all linked to things like um, Breaksby Road South, for example, there's been a water main burst in the past few days. That's caused all sorts of lorries to try finding new routes around the, the various side roads. So I think if we have some surveys done, yeah. the yeah. traffic surveys will do a number of things. They, they, they're the tubes that go across the road yeah. and they can do several things. They can tell us the speed, the time, of course, when this happens, and equally importantly, the type and size of vehicle. So they would tell us, for example, if they're three wheel, six wheel, six, you know, th they'll tell us types of lorries and what time those lorries are going through. Because from what you've said to, and, and, I, and uh, Ms. Aikerman also said in your correspondence with Ocado, it's clearly that you've had issues with uh, large lorries that are serving uh, local local distribution hubs. And yeah. we know the, the saga of the issues in South Price because of the low bridges and things like that. Um, so I think it would be useful for us to know what these lorries are and when they're going through there. One thing I will be suggesting, I think, to Councillor Riley, and we'll discuss this um, offline, Councillor Riley, when we next meet, is perhaps we might need to have a video survey too, because ordinarily we would say, please provide us with the evidence of the lorries. Well, really, we can't expect to employ you, the, the residents, with a clipboard sitting out there 24-7 monitoring the, the lorries are going through. I'd like to see what lorries are that are going through and I'd like to share, share that with HS2. I do have because, some picture okay. evidence if you want. If like you've got some of that, please forward it through. That would be yeah, extremely please. useful. And, and, you know, I have, this is, we've had um, issues with lorries going down Ladygate Lane, other roads in the area. And we have taken this up with, with HS2. And when they've investigated, they found that some of the contractors concerned have been using those routes, even though they're not the, the, uh, the, um, the, the permitted place. routes. Yeah. So any information you have on that would be extremely useful. Okay. Um, Councillor Riley also very ably mentioned this London Lorry Control Scheme. Um, I think we need to, if he and his colleagues are minded to rejoin this scheme, it gives us the opportunity to talk to London councils who administer that scheme, see if it's fit for purpose, see if it's actually covering the right roads. What I think has happened in the case of Ocado is that Ocado have, have gone cap in hand to the people at the who operate the scheme and said, we can't get our lorries through um, unless we go down some of the other roads. Can we please have permission to go down there? And they've probably been given some authority. I think if we're part of the scheme, we can have a say in whether we think that's that's appropriate or not. We have to be careful, of course, that as Councillor Rice said, it is a, a local distributor road, so we can't sort of outlaw all of the lorry traffic yeah. but I think what you want as a resident is you want something that's reasonable you want you don't want stuff at you know 18 ton uh, lorries going thundering past your premises at sort of two o'clock in the morning and I think that the survey above all the survey will, will show us the evidence of what's actually happening and then we can have discussions some practical discussions as to what we do do next okay in terms of the the crossings um one thing that you do have in terms of the zebra crossings, you've got these um, zebrite halos, you know, the the, the, yeah, sort of the, yeah. the the collars around them. So you're quite fortunate there. Hillingdon was the first London borough to have those. Now everybody copies us. Um, Councillor Riley knows we put some in recently near a school in another part of the borough. So we've already got that. So that's one box that's ticked. But I think what you are also saying is that some of the pavements are quite narrow and you're concerned about the proximity of the lorries coming through and the speed. Yes. I think the speed survey again will give us some evidence to see what we can do and then we can perhaps look at the reviewing the speed limit through there and seeing what, what would be appropriate. 
Right. OK. Yeah. And then I think perhaps the last bit from me is and, and you know, Council Riley may come back on some other points is just to say, echoing the point he made about the roundabout that, um, you know, where that tragic accident um, took place. And we have had some discussions. He and I have had some we've had some exchanges of ideas and thoughts and things like that. And I think it's perhaps I'm not sure whether Councillor Riley you want to share those thoughts with us tonight in terms of a, of a graphic or whether you think we'll, we'll do some more work and discuss it with the ward councillors. Um, I think I think I think just as a, as yeah I'm on okay I think just as a uh, as a preliminary indication it might be um, uh, useful to share that as a graphic. Right, well, let, let me let me show that assuming that the to technology show the sort of, works. To show can... the sort of thinking that we're that we're aiming at. Yeah, bear with me just one moment. Uh, technology sometimes lets me down. Oh, yeah, bear with me a moment. Let me get rid of that. Right. Right. What can you see on your screen? Right, there it is. Yeah. Okay, yep. Yeah. So sorry for the apologies for all the confusion, all the stuff, a lot of a lot of lines and things over there. But I think to in, to, to summarise it very briefly, we looked at the idea of raising the entire roundabout. The problem with doing that, apart from the sheer cost of it, is the drainage implications and the fact that because of all the the, the water that comes flowing down Windmill Hill, we didn't want to be flooding the the houses adjacent to um, to the roundabout. Mm -hmm. But we felt perhaps one idea was to raise the existing crossing points. So those sort of um, rectangles are in the sort of pinky rectangles are intended to be raised speed tables. You've already got the crossing points there. That's where people want to cross. They want to cross near the roundabouts as, as much as they can. You've got yeah. a lot of people going to and from Rysett Manor Station as well as Warrender School. You yeah. mentioned that yourself, that there are, there are children in the area. We feel that if perhaps we raise the table here, then the traffic is is forced to slow. It has to slow. Yeah. And we spoke to a number of people in the area and I looked on their files. And in fact, there's a gentleman who lived on the corner who said, I thought it was a very useful quote. He said, generally speaking, the roundabout works reasonably well, provided people do not speed. Mm -hmm. And I think that has been the issue that's, that you've demonstrated. And we found that. It, so if we actually put something in there to physically slow the traffic, yeah. I think that will have the desired effect. Okay. We've also looked at the possibility of putting some bollards um, on the corners just to, as an extra little bit of deterrent and, and, and protection. So, I mean, that's the sort of thing we're looking at. We've, we're going to cost this up and we'll have some discussions, um, you know, officers and, and, and members on how we take this forward and to be blunt where the money comes from. But I think, you know, Councillor yeah. Riley has 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 influence in that regard. So I'm sure we can um, make something happen sooner rather than later. Okay. So hopefully that's helpful in terms of showing you what we're thinking yeah. of in, in broad terms. Okay. I think on, the, on the approaches, as you saw from the from each side of East Coat Road, um, in addition to the raised tables, which would slow the traffic down, uh, another idea that we had was, was to have um, different colours um, on the road surface coming into the roundabout so it, it, it highlights the fact that the roundabout is there mm -hmm. and then as you saw either one or two colours on the roundabout um, and possibly um, just just have just just using the the, the, the the yolk part of the fried egg if you like as as being the roundabout because right. at the moment very few vehicles treat the the white part of the of the well the red bit if you like um a, a, as being the roundabout they, they sort of drive through that because it's the same color as the road um so so the the idea of either having the uh, you know two very bright colors to to highlight the fact that it's a roundabout we, we we have to be careful to make sure that um tfl buses can actually you know get yeah. around the roundabout but the idea of having um arrows um and possibly even having that that centerpiece being slightly raised yeah. so that you know that it, it's it's all to do with reducing the speed coming into that roundabout um and and uh, and so as you can see there's 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 there's, a, there's quite a lot there um and if if we have those bollards or or even some sort of barriers 
around the four corners that are then linked to the um the raised crossings um then then that gives a fairly good i think um a, a sort of safety uh, overall uh, uh, area for all four crossing areas yeah I think I can just add another another point that's related to that as well is that um, people may not realise or forgotten, but ten years ago those islands at that round were all altered. So they are in fact the islands are wider and the crossing distance of pedestrians are already shorter. So they we we, we have done something in the in the oh, yeah. regional past, yeah. but yeah. clearly if we made those crossing points raised, it would be even better in terms of of slowing the traffic. And as Councillor Riley said, we can put some coloured coloured surfacing on the approaches. Also, you may recall that some years ago a scheme was put in which had red hatching through the red, sorry, red surfacing through the hatching. So off to the right of that plan, the hatching sort of extends off the plan. You can see it all looks very worn. Um, mm -hmm. I looked through it, went through that at the weekend, and actually a lot of the white lines are, are, are worn away to almost invisibility. Yeah. So one of the things we will do is to put all of those white lines back, and I think we'll put the red surfacing back because it makes the roads seem a little bit narrower and I think you know if we can actually do some proper care and attention to these things as well as the new stuff I think we'll end up with a, a scheme which is hopefully beneficial in terms of achieving all the results that you want which in terms of slowing the traffic and making it safer for pedestrians and and motorists alike yeah and and then also just to say that as Councillor Riley said the roundabout there some people have said in the past well why don't you build up the middle of the roundabout and put some signs in it well unfortunately we have to allow buses to turn because they do turn in and out of there so that's the reason why it's a sort of a shaped fried egg as Councillor Riley said yeah okay all right okay. it, did, it, it did occur to me of course as well um, moving away now from the roundabout going back up to where, where, where um, you were talking about earlier um, and that corner um, uh, uh, um, which is a particular concern by the uh, petrol station coming coming towards Ryslip as, as you go away from that uh, going towards East Coat and sort of on, going on towards um, the sort of ha the, the hatch end direction that then becomes uh, after that mini roundabout um, it be, uh, at the bottom of Joel Street, it becomes a 20 mile an hour speed limit all the way through to the to um, uh, uh, the, uh, not hatch end all the way through to well yeah uh, where the Tesco's is and I just wondered whether we can uh, uh, think of also about extending that 20 mile an hour limit to 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 maybe to Highgrove um, I mean it has to end somewhere and 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 start somewhere but because of that stretch of road and you're right about the the speeds going round that corner and then suddenly you're on top of the high growth um, crossing without without you know in, in a very short period of time um, and, and, and it, the, the footpath at its narrowest um, along there as well um, whether or not we can't we, we, we can look at maybe and it's just something I haven't spoken to David about but it's just something that suddenly occurred to me of course that there is that 20 mile an hour speed limit the other end so maybe we could extend it um, back at least to I think we'd struggle to have a 20 mile an hour speed limit along the whole length of East Coat Road because it is a major arterial road but um, uh, uh, but but extending what's there already maybe to the high grove um crossing might be an idea i don't know i think what what we'll do is i think we, you're you're right councillor riley it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's food for thought i think we should have a discussion about it as you know um you you've had some discussion with us about some other 20 mile per hour zones in the area yeah um so it's quite what once one starts with a, with a 20 mile per hour zone one then the natural conversation is well where do we extend it to I think perhaps offline we should have a discussion about that and see what's possible. Steve yeah. and I would be happy to assist with that. And would obviously, if if a scheme were to go ahead, one thing we can reassure uh, petitioners is that there would be a consultation because in law, if we're changing the speed limit, we have to yeah. um, do a consultation. Yeah, I, I, it's just that I'd forgotten about that additional, yeah. the, the one that's there already. And, and of course, that, that um, going away from the um from the from the mini roundabout that goes into uh, uh, uh that, that takes you back up into east coach um up by st lawrence's church and all that yeah uh, 
the the, the, the continuation uh, of, of our yes, Cuckoo Hill towards Cuckoo Hill is twenty That's it, Cuckoo Hill. Yeah. I'm struggling to remember the name. Um, uh, the, 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 the that whole stretch on Cuckoo Hill is twenty mile limit and and has got very large speed humps on it. Now, I'm not suggesting we have speed humps because I think we wouldn't get a, we wouldn't do that. But but um, just to just to bring it back a bit. Um, to mit to mitigate that corner, um, maybe an idea, but we'll talk about that offline. Okay. Okay. All right, that's very helpful. Um, thank you very much for that, David. Uh, Steve, have you got any additional matters to? Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman. I think really it was um, obviously the next stage of the process is to identify suitable areas to undertake the uh, speed and traffic surveys, uh, and it would be helpful, I think, to have uh, ward councillors and, and petitioners input into that process. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All right. I mean, so, so that we can push this along, would it would it be all right to say um, uh, within the next um, sort of seven to 10 days that we can get those ideas using technology, scribble on the plan, send okay. us a, send us a picture on your mobile, on your on your on your phone. Okay. And then we've got it then. And then what happens is Steve talks to one of his colleagues and we commission these surveys we use an independent company right so okay. that they are completely independent of us they go out they do the survey they usually usually for about 10 days so it's certainly 24 7. Yeah. we get the information back um they give us a first pass of analysis then we look at and then we do a report and we go to council riley and the ward councillors and say well this is what we found what do you think um yeah. and we and take it from the, uh, i mean in other areas we, we we've said that we'd wait until maybe August, September to, to do such a thing because the buildup of traffic with people going back to work. But I'm not sure, I don't think that, that applies in this case because a lot of what is being said is happening already. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, ordinarily, in normal circumstances, and we don't live in normal times at the moment, ordinarily we would say we would not do these surveys normally in school holiday times, ordinarily. Yeah. And we would do it when the traffic is at its busiest. Uh, of course, during the COVID pandemic, then the traffic's gone slightly crazy. But having said that, from what you've told us, is that actually a large people are going, use, they're, we're all ordering stuff online. So the large lorries, the ones that are going through more, even more so now. So I think if we, if we agree that we will do some surveys um, as soon as we reasonably can, yeah. It's just, we normally order, the, order them as, as a batch. We say we would do some for here and we do some for elsewhere just because that's we basically sort of do a quick tender process to get them yeah. get them done. They are the most reliable forms of survey that you can get. I can remember many years ago I spoke to a police officer. I won't tell you why I spoke to the police officer. And um, he said that they are the most effective and reliable form of, of speed detection device that, that, that exists. Yeah. So we will we use them. Well, and, and also for, for to get a full picture, we need to put them uh, and, and we'll be guided by the, the, the sightings yes. from the ward councillors uh, 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 and uh, Ms. Brown. But um, we'll, put, we'll, we'll aim to put them uh, strategically along the whole stretch. Yeah. Um, if it's helpful from, also just to mention, um, it, it might seem a silly thing, but the, the best location, if it's possible, is where there's a tree or a lamp column. Some oh, yeah. reason is they're chained to them. Yeah. And if we don't do that, then somebody comes along and steals them. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Quite, why, quite what they do with them, I don't know. But um, no. But, 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 but no, but my point was that, it, that for different reasons, um, we, we need them on the approach to and going away from the roundabout and, uh, and, and the, the corner and, and essentially the, the, you know, the, we need to cover the length of the, of the road um, from essentially from the, the, the petrol station all the way down back down to um, uh, to the dock house essentially. Yeah, and I, well, I think the other thing I mentioned was we it's not in the report and it's not a recommendation, but we can choose, we can discuss it separately. Is the idea of a video survey? I mean, Ms. Brown yeah. very kindly said that she's got some photographs. I, I would very much welcome those. I will take those up personally with with HS2. But yeah. I suspect in the circumstances, um, some film, some video would be extremely informative. OK. OK. All right. Well, um, unless uh, and I'm not worried about the protocol about this, unless either of the war councillors have anything to add to what we've said so far. I, I would like to add something quickly. Firstly, um, I think it's been a really good discussion and, and um, 
that I think what you're talking about in terms of collecting that information will really bring home um, what what Shelley has been talking about. And I've seen the pictures, and and also I know Shelley and the neighbours have actually been writing down certain times of when when lorries and stuff are going. So they've already got some great information. Um, my one sort of comment, which is only a comment in terms of putting it in the air, because I think the process described, let's do it and let's see how it works, is is the happy sad face signs. I think generally do work very well. But in this instance, my one sort of worry might be that the type of um, drivers that we're talking about are professional drivers with big vehicles. Uh, and while those sort of happy sad signs certainly work with me when I'm driving, um, you know, those type of drivers are, do they work with those type of drivers who maybe are under time limits um, to complete jobs um, where I know speed cameras aren't possible for the reasons you suggest and that's obviously completely fine where but that would be a more potent um, motivation for them but ultimately I'm just throwing it out there as a thing to consider as we go forward because I think that the thought that's been put in there and, and the ideas that have been suggested so far are, are very good and we should definitely go through with them so um, so thank you everyone for um, having a good old thought about this and, that, and I think we're going to get to a good just on that just on that point uh, 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 Councillor that, that there are a whole raft of different um, uh, uh, expression, not not expressions of, of of warnings that you can get with these um, vehicle activation signs, and and you're absolutely right. I mean, the, uh, I I particularly think the ones in Moor Park, for example, which are the happy smiley faces, or even the devil face and the happy face, or whatever it is, that works with normal, well, with car drivers, let's say, because you're you're suddenly faced with it, and it's at a level which which catches the eye. But equally, I've seen other um, uh, 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 other um, things that go on the, those monitors, um, which, which basically say, you know, slow down exclamation mark or, or you're going too fast or whatever, which, and we could put them at different heights, I guess, um, uh, or think about seeing how, if we can put them at different heights, um, which is a very good point, actually. And, um, and, and maybe, you know, of, of the four um, or however many we can uh, put in, you know, um, uh, two could be aimed at, or half could be aimed at the professional driver and half at everybody else in yeah. terms of what you can program the screen to do. So there's a, there is a variety of, of different ones, and I, it's a very good point that you make, uh, and thank you for that. All right, uh, Councillor Hagar, anything? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I think we've had a really good open discussion here. I mean, I use that roundabout all the time. Um, I'm local. My kids have to cross it. Um, so it's very, very important for me. And actually today I did come across a lorry whilst coming home. Um, so I'm quite happy to also uh, acknowledge that we definitely need some uh, happy or not happy signs. Um, one of the things I, did, I didn't think we covered and I just wanted to just put a point in, is there any way that we can have any type of barriers um, on the corners as well? Um, I just wanted to throw that in there. I'm not sure whether that's a possibility or not. Yeah, we, um, we, I think we covered that before. Um, uh, uh, if you, if the, the plan that, uh, or at least the, the design that um, David Knowles put up. Yeah, I saw that. Did, yeah, did have on it that each on each of the four corners that yeah. uh, are on the roundabout, linking up with the raised table crossings. Yeah, that that either um, uh, uh, some sort of posts or possibly um, uh, crash barriers. Um, uh, uh, but brilliant, uh, you know that that's already in contemplation. Brilliant. that's fantastic. I just wanted to confirm that. Yeah, and yeah. Um, that's brilliant. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, apart from that, I think I'm, I'm perfectly, um, you know, happy. I, I, for me, I think most of the lorries, when I see them, their speed is coming from Rysip High Street down onto the roundabout. So that's yeah. my view from what I've noted. And yeah. I'm happy to, um, you know, say more really on that as well. But thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, for, you know, again, thank you, Nick, for sharing the views of myself and the councillors too, Nick, um, Councillor Dennis. And um, thank you for taking it on board as well. And thank, thank you, you. Christine, too. All right. Well, I think it's um, for me to make recommendations. Um, and, and, and it's very much along the lines of what we've talked about and in, in no particular order. But before I do, I think... Uh, uh, to say to uh, 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 Shelley that, that, that you know you've done an enormous amount of work and we're incredibly grateful but if you can um, uh, send through to uh, David and he will pass it on to uh, uh, whoever needs to see it 
you know all the material that you've gathered so i i, I saw from the petition you know the the extent of the um uh, of, of like a diary that you had and the nature of the vehicles and all the rest of it so that we you know so that we've got that sort of first-hand information so that in our discussions where we are having discussions with outside agencies we can say look this isn't just us our observations these are the people who who actually live on the road telling us what's happened yeah, um, right. so we've got that evidence and that'll be very helpful i think for david and his team to have to hand okay very much so um all right so um so yes i um i um surveys uh, with indication from ward councillors and the petitioner in terms of uh, the citing of them yep. uh, where, um, that they should as much as possible cover the length of the road that we're talking about um, the officers should engage in conversation um, i know they're doing it anyway but i'll just put it formally with hs2 about the lorry movements and the extent to which we can um, identify many of these lorries as being hs2 related and coupled with that that we should um, have discussions with our london council's colleague uh, council colleagues about the london lorry control scheme because i think that um, things have changed very much in terms of the effectiveness and the and the and the, the kind of drive, no pun intended, of to the extent that we can getting lorries off our residential roads, and if if nothing else, being able to um, offer better routes for them. Um, because of course, the other thing about the about these about routes like Eastcote Road is that they are predominantly um, resident routes and driver car routes which can't really help the lorries in one sense I mean they want to get on with it and and the road itself isn't designed for that sort of traffic so to the extent that that, that we can to look into all aspects of limiting frequency and weight of lorries which includes as I say talking to our colleagues at the london lorry control scheme see if seeing if we can include um, east coat road or any other roads nearby that um, really shouldn't have these lorries on um, to take forward the um, all the various alterations and mitigations with regard to the roundabout to take forward the installation or, or the purchase and installation of the vehicle activation signs um, in whatever form they are and David Knowles mentioned that you know technology is, uh, has gone in leaps and bounds on these things and I read somewhere about the fact that these things can be programmed in a variety of different ways in, uh, in which they um, uh, uh, work and to take on board the issue that Councillor Dennis raised about the height and the nature of the information on those signs um, to take forward the issue concerning um, the extension of the 20 mile an hour speed limit from Cuckoo Hill, uh, possibly just to around the corner uh, as far as uh, Highgrove uh, Leisure Centre is concerned. Um, and I think, unless I'm prompted that I've missed anything, that's all I was going to say was, Councillor Riley, if you, if you just check the screen, obviously, and I'm trying to think of help, helping Ryan out here because Ryan will formally minute the the proceedings tonight, and he will share the the minutes with with the lead petitioners. And so, I just think to, just to be absolutely clear for his benefit, these are the recommendations that were in the report. If you if you were if you were to cater to sort of case care to sort of glide down them and say yes 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 and yes because I think then it will help Ryan enormously with making sure that when he minutes it, he's, he's covered absolutely everything that we've discussed. Yeah. So, I mean, the f first item is um, notes and advising those attending the petition hearing and the reports and not discussing that that tragic incident. Oh, well, yeah, we have we've done we, that. Yeah, we've only, um, we've only really... We're meeting with petitioners. This yeah. all sounds bureaucratic, but we're doing that. Yeah, I've done Number that. Number three, um, we are having discussions about London councils. I think with that, so you, 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 you approve that we do that. I think we can add to that also having discussion with HS2, as you've said. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it notes the previous road safety measures on Eastcote Road. That's just a, a point of the fact that there are some that, that are there. That's 
notes that the high resurfacing has been provisionally pro programmed for parts of East Coot Road as yep. advised by the House. That's in the report. So that's all good news. Um, ask officers to commission independent surveys. We're going to do that. And in do fact, that, yeah. we'll, we'll hear back from the councillors and from the lead petitioner on the best locations for that. Mm -hmm. We've talked about speed cameras that unfortunately we can't do those, but yep. that's all explained. Um, then we would develop some outline costed proposals. Well, I've already done, had some discussions with Councillor Riley. He was keen that we, we, you know, as Councillor Dennis said, we actually hit the ground running. We want to go ahead with some proposals as soon as we can. So we're, we're ahead of the game on that one. Yeah. And just notes that any traffic calming scheme involving physical measures and or speed limit changes would be subject to a consultation with all affected residents before implementation. So the residents who actually are affected by this in terms of the people who live on the on the roads, they would get a consultation from the council to explain what was being proposed and they get their opportunity to to comment on those, whether they yeah. they like them or not. So I think that's probably the, the, the gist of it. Yeah, um, I just I, I mean, going through the, the list that I had, it, I mean, it's yeah, it, it's essentially doing it, it, yeah. it covered those those points, but it was just to make the the, the, the specific points in relation to yeah. those areas. Uh, I'm sure uh, Ryan's got all those. I just, I'm just, yeah, I'm yeah. just being mindful. He, he's He's very politely sitting there, and he's 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 he's, he's got to he's got to be talking to me in a week or two's time, saying, "Well, what do we actually agree there, David?" So yeah. I think yeah. we, for clarity, for, for everyone's uh, understanding, we, we, right. we've done that. Sure, sure, okay. Thank you. All right, good. Um, right. Well, with all of those things uh, in mind, and those things that um, we've uh, we've set out there, I think um, it should go a very long way, hopefully, to. Um, alleviating the problems uh, that have been uh, highlighted and raised in this petition. So uh, unless anybody else has got anything that they want to add, I think I can draw this petition hearing to a conclusion. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. If you thank want you. to... Thank you. Tell the recording, Brian, that's... Uh... I will just end the live stream here. Thank you.